Hi, a while back we looked at some AC to DC converter designs for a LoRa project that I was working on and the idea is that we provide it with a main supply and we're able to get a 5 and a 3.3 volt supply out for the LoRa chipset and a couple of relays and the idea really with this is that the design should be pretty low cost and quite compact and the first one we looked at was a capacitive dropper uh, with a linear regulator to provide that 3.3 volt rail um, and then we looked at this non-isolated book converter, which actually came in slightly cheaper than the capacitive dropper because we had some super caps on there. Um, so this had some really great efficiency. The downside with the book converter here is that the output is not isolated. So it uses an inductor very similar to any other kind of book converter, but there's no galvanic isolation between the input and output. So if there's a fault or even under certain circumstances, you might be able to get a shock from the output. So what we're going to look at today is the design of an isolated converter to give us this same output, 230 volts, giving us 5 and 3.3 volts. Now, just as we did last time, we're going to use the Power Integrations website because the Power Integrations ICs are actually really competitively priced, but also the tool that we have on the Power Integrations website makes it really quite straightforward to design a switch mode power supply and it also helps you with any transformer specifications if you need to wind one for your project. So we're going to click on start designing and the application here, it doesn't matter too much but it's a IoT type device, output power only up to 5 watts and we've got a universal input. I always choose universal input unless specifically it's never going to be used at lower voltages because it can help with the initial debugging when you first power it up you don't have to take it all the way up to 230 volts you can get it running at about 80 volts which is quite helpful and reduces any risk associated with that first power up now the topology we can leave as um, open but i think what we're going to pick here is flyback because that makes the most sense for something of this size some of these other designs are designed more towards high power devices uh, the book and the boost, for example, won't work for us because they are non-isolated topologies. So the flyback is the way forward here. And we can pick yes as the isolated option. So we click start designing. And then it gives us some details of some potential devices that we can use. Uh, but we might want to narrow down the system a little bit more here. So we're going to pick two outputs here. So the benefit of using something like a flyback converter is that we can wind the transformer such that we have two output windings and I don't have to have that linear regulator for the 3.3 volt rail running on the 5 volt rail so this will improve our efficiency and simplify the circuit a little bit isolated supply output type uh, we only want constant voltage output flyback and that's it and this is the choice of chips that we've got available so one way that we can ch uh, narrow down here is have a quick look on the a digikey website for example see how expensive these devices and also how complicated the circuit is so i think we'll quickly do that now so first of all it's recommending the inno switch 3 family and if we take a look at this on digikey uh, you can see these look like they're a little bit unsuitable for our design we don't really need something as large as this for a very low power design if we look at the cheapest one here it's this device here the inno switch ce and as you can see the schematic is just a little bit more complicated that we need and we really don't need sort of 10 watts output i think there must be a smaller simpler device for just a couple of watts power output so the next one that it came up with was the link switch series of devices like the lnk562 coming in at 53 pence now this is in a eight pin package this is much more suitable for a little low power power supply and if we take a look at the data sheet for that first one, you can see this is suited for up to 3 watts depending on the design, uh, sorry, the device that you're using. And this is looking pretty close already to what we need. A very simple design, AC input with a rectifier. Then we've got the link switch uh, control chip here. It's using a bias feedback winding here, which can improve the low power efficiency compared to an optocoupler. Uh, and then we've got the DC output. So this is very straightforward to design. Uh, no primary clamp as well, which simplifies the design because it's only a very low power design. So this one's already looking like a good option, the LNK562. We need 1.8 watts, I think, for this design. So this one would be a good option. Uh, then we've got the tiny switch, uh, such as the TNY284. Same price. And actually the uh, control circuit overall is very, very similar. Instead of the bias winding here, they've illustrated the optocoupler feedback, but I think they can also work with the bias winding. 
Now these ones are slightly higher power devices, 6 watts, 5 watts, so there's probably not much to choose between the Link Switch LP and the Tiny Switch 4. Um, so we'd have to have a look at these in a little bit more detail unless uh, there's any particular preference for other reasons. And then the last one was the top switch. Uh, these are a little bit more expensive. Again, similar kind of form factor. So these would probably do the job. Um, but these ones are designed for higher power outputs. And I think we're better off using something that's been optimised for the low power sort of 2 watt area that we're looking at. So I think really this one looks like it's going to do the job. If we take a look at the design... It's all fairly straightforward. It should be pretty easy to drive. They've got an example here with the bias winding and the feedback, and it tells you how to design with this device. But we don't actually need to know too much from the data sheet because the tool actually helps us with it. So let's click on the link switch. Um, let's use this one here. And we'll go to PIXLS, or Pixels as they call it. So this is the design tool. We just fill in this spreadsheet with all of the details of our design and it will come up with the design parameters at the end for us. Uh, so it's already done things like the input voltage, 85 to 265 volts, uh, 50 hertz line frequency and our primary output voltage is 5 volts. Uh, we only want CV output. You can pick a combination of CV and CC so that if you reach the current limit then it starts decreasing the output voltage but we don't need that for this design. Uh, there's a few numbers here that it's filled in, like the output cable resistance. That's for efficiency calculations, but we don't need to worry about it too much. Feedback type, either bias or optocoupler. Now, the bias design is a lot simpler, and it gives us better efficiency at low power. But the downside to using the bias winding is that the um, accuracy of the output voltage may not be as good as using a TL431 or a Zener diode with the optocoupler. But we're fine with that for now. Um and we'll add a bias winding to the transformer, we need that for that. And also, we're going to design this as a clampless design. So this family of devices is designed, because it's a low power system, it's able to avoid the use of a primary side clamp, which increases the component count, but it also decreases the efficiency of the system a little bit. So if we can go without that primary side clamp, that is better and if we pick clampless then it will try and optimize the transformer for those parameters so that we don't see huge spikes when we're switching and then we just go through pick the device it's already selected that lowest power device the LNK562 and it's put in some of the details for us about um, its operating parameters um, it's picked an E16 core which is a very small uh, flyback transformer core I think I've got some of those so we can have a look at those in a moment uh, and then we just need to put in a few details about the actual um, output voltages that we're after. So we want this one to be 5 volts, and this needs to be able to power those two relays on the LoRa board. So we need 0.2 amps, if I remember correctly, from that 5-volt uh, rail. And the 3.3-volt rail is the one that's going to run the microcontroller and stuff, and we'll just put about 160 milliamps in there for that. And that was more than enough to cover the LoRa radio when we're actually trying to transmit and receive something. And that is almost all that we need to do. It's given us some of the examples, so some of the diodes that we might want to use on the secondary side. Uh, and then it most importantly gives us the details of the transformer. And here is one of those little E16 transformer cores. Very, very compact. Uh, it's got eight pins on it, so two for the primary side and two for the secondary, which works really well because we're going to have a primary winding, the bias winding on this side, and then here we're going to have uh, the two outputs, 3.3 volts and 5 volts. Now this might have designed a center tap output for us, but you can see against the PCB way ruler just here, it's measuring about 16 millimeters. So really compact transformer design, which will help us make this nice and small on the PCB in the final incarnation. And so if we go back onto the Pixel tool and click on Transformer Construction, it actually tells us exactly how to wind this transformer. So here it is, 204 turns on the primary of 38 gauge wire. We've got a bias winding with 51 turns of 38 gauge wire. And then our output is actually a center tapped transformer. So between pin 6 and 7 here, it's giving us 3.3 volts after we've rectified it. And between pin 6 and 5, we get 5 volts. So it's using uh, the center tap for our little 3.3 volt rail. And it shows you how to wind this on the bobbin. 
So the primary winding first, then some insulation, then the bias winding, tells you where to connect those two on the bobbin, and then we get three layers of insulation, and then we have our two secondary windings. So it even gives you instructions as to how to actually wind this on the transformer. Uh, the only thing it doesn't really tell us too much about is how to gap the core, and that's something that we're going to have a look at in the next video, because all of the energy in a flyback transformer is stored in the gap. It's a little bit confusing to understand, but rather than transferring energy uh, whilst current is flowing in the primary, we actually store energy in the gap in the core, and then when the primary is not conducting, that's when we're actually conducting on the secondary side. So we need to adjust the gap between these two ferrite halves so that we get the exact performance that we're after, and I'll show you how to do that in the next video. Now one of the problems with this tool is that it doesn't actually give you a final circuit diagram and they do have another tool but it depends on the device that you've selected as to whether it offers that enhanced functionality. So I think if we picked the Tiny Switch 4 it uses the other tool on the PI website and that gives you a more in-depth final circuit diagram. Now it does give you things like the feedback resistor that you need in your design but what you end up having to do is go to the product page for the device that you're working with and try to find some design examples that match what you're trying to do. So for example, uh, we've got a 1.75 watt high, high efficiency linear charger replacement. Now that sounds pretty similar to what we're trying to design. So then you click on there and see if the design looks similar to what you're implementing and then you can use that kind of as inspiration for your design. And in fact, this one is pretty close um, for some reason, it's got a trifiler winding on this particular design, but the basics are there. So it shows, in this case, just a half bridge rectifier with a filter inductor. We've got our primary, we've got the link switch device, we've got the bias winding with the two feedback resistors, which I said on here does actually give you these values, so you don't have to work out anything there. And then you get an example of what the output would look like, and there's tons of ways that you can design this. Uh, the most basic is just a diode with a capacitor and sometimes you might need this load resistor to keep it stable. In this example they put a little snubber across the diode um, but uh, this is the basic circuit diagram. Now with our centre tap transformer we just need to add in another one of these to give us our 3.3 volt and our 5 volt rails. So I've actually drawn this design up in KiCad and the idea with this is I haven't optimised this for this particular application just yet so we've got extra components in here to allow us to experiment and see if this is the right design for us. So what we've got here is a full wave rectifier, we've got our inrush uh, current limiting resistor just here, an 8.2 ohm fusible resistor, uh, we've got some capacitors on the 325 volt DC bus so this one is a CLC design so we get less noise here and we've also got some resistors to discharge these capacitors once we unplug it. Now we've added in a primary side clamp or at least the components there so that we can add it in if it's needed or at least see what the effect is by adding it in even if we don't actually end up needing it in the final design. We've got some test points scattered across the design as well which allow us to look at the waveforms and we've got our link switch LNK562 just here. Then we've got our bias feedback winding. Uh, this pretty much followed that design that we saw in the uh, design example. So we've got our two feedback resistors feeding into the feedback pin just here with a capacitor just to filter the output slightly from here. And then we've got our secondary output. So between pin 5 and 6 we had our 3.3 volts output. So we've got place for these snubbers. We may not need them. Uh, we've got some bulk capacitors as well as a filter and then some more capacitors. And then on the 5 volt rail, which is between pin 5 and 7 on the transformer, we've got the um, half wave rectifier going through to a bulk capacitor and then just out to the output terminals. Now, the 5 volt rail is going to be driving some relays, so we don't really need low noise performance. But I thought we'd add at least a placeholder for a CLC filter on the 3.3 volt rail so we can keep it as clean as possible. But again, if we decide we don't need it, we can just link these out and see how it performs with just the very basic circuit. 
And then we've got the PCB design, and as you can see, it's obviously not optimised for size. This is designed to be a development board, a bit like the book converter board. So things are spread out and it's all laid out in a linear fashion to help us with probing and debugging and trying to work out what's going on on the PCB. So everything is a little bit oversized. I've tried to keep it tight where it matters around the transformer and the switcher I see. Uh, but other than that, nothing else should affect the performance too much. So this just gives us freedom when we're playing about with the board. And we've got some isolation slots where we need them and the isolation slot between the primary and secondary. In fact, if we view it in 3D, you can see that in a bit more detail. We've got the slots between some of these diodes just where the traces are a bit close and we've got our isolation barrier between the primary and secondary sides of the transformer. Next, we're going to order the PCBs on our sponsor for this video's website, PCBWay. And don't forget, they're currently celebrating their ninth anniversary, and you can get some free coupons if you click on the anniversary banner. They've also got some promotional pricing on much of their services, and there's also a lucky draw that might allow you to win some of these prizes listed along the bottom. But let's go through and order our PCB. So we're going to click on Quote Now. And we're going to quick order our PCB, which means that we can upload the Gerber files directly. Then we just click on Add Gerber File and we'll upload the Gerbers. Now, bearing in mind this is a slightly larger PCB, 180 millimeters by 55. So it's over that 100 by 100 millimeter board, which gives us our $5 pricing. So this one's more expensive at $27. So if you are trying to make some prototype boards, if you can, try and keep the dimensions less than 100 by 100 for the best pricing because even though this is very similar in terms of board area uh, that increases the cost and I don't think we need to worry too much about any of the other settings on this it's just a basic development board um, so all of the standard settings here should be absolutely fine for this design and then there's a range of shipping options now I actually tested out a couple of these and I think I had the global standard shipping and that came in just over a week for only $5. So it's well worth, if you're trying to save some money, picking some of these other options rather than DHL. DHL gets to the UK extremely quickly, but you do pay a price for that. So that's our prototype design all complete. And I'll order this on the PCBWay website. And as soon as it arrives, we'll assemble this up and try and test it. And as you saw, the Power Integrations website really makes it quite easy to design one of these converters. And we'll see how well it works in the next video because what we're going to do is wind the little transformer and try and set it up for this design. And I'll show you the tools that you need to try and get that exactly right. But if you've got any thoughts and comments, don't forget to leave them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to visit our sponsor for this video, PCBWay, if you're thinking about getting some PCBs made. And until next time, thanks for watching.